Hello everybody, welcome to another devlog for Forest Folk, a game about befriending little men and living in a forest with nature. The biggest change this month was a rework of the world gen code. Previously it generated a square of border objects, then chose random positions within the square to create patches of objects according to some parameters like patch density, range, and likelihood of spawning. I wanted to make the maps a bit more interesting to explore and to make the gen more intentional, so I created a new system using tile maps. Now, before creating any objects, a tile map is generated with different tile colors representing different types of objects. First it fills the map with the border tile, then cuts out a big circle with this lighter tree tile type. I knew I wanted a meandering path that occasionally opened into a clearing, so my first attempt created a number of circles of random size and position, represented with this lighter green grass tile. Then it connected each clearing to another nearby clearing with a straight path. There were a number of issues with this system, so I decided instead to carve the map with a meandering XY coordinate on the tile map. First it chooses a random position along the border of the map, and carves a straight line towards the center until it breaks through the border tiles. From there, it repeatedly chooses a random direction, length, and width for each segment, gradually changing from the previous values to avoid extremely sharp turns. Every so many segments a larger circle is made, and a dice is rolled to potentially make a tangential path, which goes for some distance before reaching a dead end. On a dead end, the coordinate of the clearing is restored, and the normal path carries on from there. Once I had adjusted this gen code and was satisfied with the shapes he was giving me, I wrote some code to translate the tile map into a playable area. Basically, it goes over each cell of the tile map, finds out which tile type is there, and creates a respective object at relative position in the room. To add the rest of the game objects, a random cell is chosen on the tile map until a grass tile is found and from there a patch is generated just as before. The result of this is much more interesting to explore because different areas are more memorable, like occasionally you'll find a path that is almost hidden by a patch of trees that generated in the middle of it. It also feels much more foresty than before. Additionally, a tile map is now generated for the floor texture, so there are random patterns of different grassy tiles instead of just one texture repeating all over the floor. Other than the world gen, I've made some small changes to dialogue. The text bubbles are now full size instead of growing as the text draws, because I found it slightly annoying trying to read the text before when it was quickly scrolling away. And I've added this little squash and stretch animation to the PAL character just to give him a little more life. I've also implemented openable containers, so you can now view inventories of certain containers and move objects between them, like this wooden crate. I'm going to keep the inventory sizes small for now to encourage decoration with extra items rather than storing everything in boxes. You can also now see the descriptions of mixes in your inventory instead of only while making them with the mortar and pestle. You can also add previously created mixes back into the mortar and pestle, so if you know something like three mushrooms create an aspect of peace, you can prepare many batches of ground mushrooms to sprinkle some peace onto any blend you're working on. I've added this torch item, which is the first holdable light source to be crafted with tree resin, which you get along with bark from scraping trees. I've made some slight visual changes to the plowed dirt object, making it slowly disappear as time goes by and get darker when watered. Planted crops now also change color if left without water and will die if you neglect them for too long. I've introduced some new balances on the folk because it was too easy to amass them before in my playtest. Now when you're placing a hut kit, you can see a circle around the kit that indicates whether it is too close to another hut, or to any solid object like a tree. If it doesn't have enough room, a uh, folk won't move into it. The folk also now require a certain amount of decoration around their huts before they'll follow you, so you need to befriend them in the wild, build them a hut with enough room for them to move in, then give them some time to settle in and decorate. Only then will they accompany you on outings and help you gather and carry resources. Lastly, I've made a new music track, probably to be used as a daytime track in some later area of the game. I'll play that at the end over some gameplay. If you're interested in more about the game, or if you're an indie dev looking to share and discuss your own work, come join the Discord. Also follow me on Twitter for more regular updates on my progress with the game. That's all I've got for now. Thank you for watching.